All right, if you haven't worked with FZF before, it's so amazing. I really don't know how you live your life. So with FZF, just in the terminal, and I'm using iTerm here, just in the terminal, not in Vim, because FZF is a command line utility. It just so happens that there is a Vim wrapper made by the same maintainer. But when you're out here in the terminal and you want to get things done, you can use FCF in so many ways. It integrates with so many things. And I don't want to be one of the assholes that says, read the docs, but uh, read the docs. But I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you where to look in the docs and where to get good examples. And then you can take those examples and turn them into what you need. So here I am on my own branch in the Jest repo from the open source testing framework project. And this is my lab branch of doom. So this is where I'm going to go through and turn the word mock into the word stub as appropriate. And so that should be fun. Uh, I, I'm not really going to do that because that would never get accepted. You just have to live in a world where everything's a mock, even when it's not. But hey, love me some jest. Let's say that I want to find out how to express myself when using jest. Well, if I go here and type express, say, okay, well, that's great. And I want to now only look in markdown files. So let me see here. Well, I see cache regular expression there, right over here. Okay. Well, learning how to express myself. It's a lot of regular expressions. How to express, oh, how to test express. Okay, that's not what I want. Hmm. All right, well, you know what? I'll just go ahead and pull up this diff sequences readme. And you'll note that over here, it's on line 96. And so I get a little preview window over there, which is wonderful. And that's using bat as the previewer. Well, it might be highlight. We'll have to check. But either way, they're, they're awesome. So I want to go there. And I don't just want to go to that file. I want to go to that location in the file. And I want to go there now in my editor because why would I want to wait around? So without further ado, oh, look at that. Look where I am. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. All right. So now that I'm in here, I can pull up Git files. And for me, that's mapped to control P. And that's going to go through and look at all the files while respecting the Git project. So you'll note that I'm down here in packages, diff sequences, but the search is scoped to my Git repo. So if I wanted to see what they were doing here on their ESLint, for example, then I can do that and you can see, okay, that's got a lot going on there. Okay, well, that's great. All right. So you can do that. Now that's just fine. Great. It's a fuzzy searcher. We get it. And of course I have it wired up with rip grip, which is blazing fast, blazing fast. What else can I do here? What I can do is open some more buffers so we can see what's going on here. So there's my init vim. Okay. That's right. I'm using neo vim. And so now let's take a look at the buffers. Okay, well, and I get a little preview here of everything that we're in. So we're in VimRC right now, so I can see the sequences read me still over there in case I forget where I am. Okay, and I want to go back to sequences read me. Okay, great. So that's cool. Now, what else can I do? Well, one thing that I do all the time, all the time, and if you're a NeoVim or Vim user, you're forever editing runtime path files. So I have that set up 
as a FZF, you know, command. And so, all right, now I want to find out what the heck is going on in my JavaScript. All right. And I can go here and you can see for JavaScript, I am setting line break and I have uh, EXRC there so I can have little mini RC files in a project if I want to. And so that's really wonderful. And you can see that I am still using ale because it is still awesome. So, you know, I'm still with the ale and the VSF. I haven't, what is it? Telescope. Okay. And I'm yeah, trying out the LSP stuff, uh, but I'm using ale as the client uh, for the LSPs. I've used the built-in for NeoVim and it's cool, but not sure how I feel about the inline errors and some other stuff. It seems nice, but ale stable and I'm used to the way I have ale set up and it's also a, a language server client. So I get what I need out of there. So it's all good. Now, what else can we do? What was I talking about? Oh, right. FZF. Okay. So what else can I do with FZF? Well, we just, we, we saw that I can switch buffers by just going like that. Now let's see if I can remember what else I can do here. Well, let's see. Okay. We saw G files. Oh, right. Yes. So we saw that I can open up my Vim runtime path files. So that's really nice. And so also marks. Oh yeah. Marks are nice. So you can see here that I have this N as a global for, oh, and actually, Hey, you know what? That got uh, reset. Well, Hey, we don't want that, but V goes to my VMRC. And so you can see these other interesting things. And then also I have, if I'm not in a JavaScript file notes, so I can go through and check out my notes and open those up. And so a lot of times I'll want to go in and pop open some notes and make some notes about something I'm working on. And uh, this makes it really easy. If I go down here, I can look at, hmm, we'll just uh, open that up and uh, see that there's nothing in there. So that's really not helpful to anyone at all. We'll see what, what do we have here that has something in it. And, well, anyway, you get the point. You can go in and uh, check out your notes. I actually need to set up the preview window for those notes so that I can have a peek at them. But for the most part, I think I know what's in there. Now, the other thing that you can do, you might have files that are hidden that are in your uh, get ignore. So when you go in, you're not going to see them here. And that's a real bummer. If you want to open something like a local environment file that you keep out of there, or who knows what I have some secret just configurations to build some local coverage stuff for myself that I don't want in my work project repos, but I want them still locally so I can use them and run them with Jest and other things. So you can also just have the FZF window open up to where it is not respecting your Git repo rules and you can poke through and find stuff there. Let's see, is there anything different here? Probably this uh, circle CI stuff is probably different. I don't know, I see some stuff in there. Uh, GitHub code owners, that's definitely gonna be in there. Oh yeah, VS code, oh yeah, yeah. That definitely, let's just make sure here. That's uh, I would be. Ooh, ooh, they have these checked into their repo that can't possibly be right. Are these examples or something? Oh, man. Well, okay, I guess that's uh, some sort of interesting decision there. Website settings. Yeah. I gotta have something in here that isn't actually... Let's see. Well, anyway, you get the point. If it, uh, you can put secret non project files 
in your directory and still get them this way. All right, so that was really boring. Sorry about that. Let's just go over here really quick and take a look at the examples here from June Gun. And if we go down and we'll look at the uh, Vim extension here. And I don't want that. I want wiki. Where's the wiki? Oh, is the wiki not there? Where am I? What is, what is happening here? Wiki. No, not that wiki. Yes, this one. Okay. There we go. All right. And we want examples. And let's look at some. Let's drill in here. So if you go through here, you're going to find tons of stuff that you can fit to your world here. Okay, and there's all kinds of things, and you can see that they're somewhat categorized here. And there's a good amount in there, so I've stolen some and changed them around. It also gives you a good idea of what you can do, and I think it's the best way to get really familiar with FCF and all the powerful things you can do with it. So if I go down here and I use my FCF here to get to my Zish functions... And you can see here that this is the VF that I used to open up the files in the first place. And you can see that what I'm doing here is sending in a query that calls into FIF. And that is this function up here. And so that goes through and uses rip grep and populates the FCF window. And this is just uh, telling it to open up in NVIM and go ahead and pass in whatever the query was for rip grep to the search so that it gets found in, you know, in, in VIM when you open it. And then I'm also hitting N once to go to the next search result and then ZZ to center the line. That's how that works. And it's pretty awesome. And you can see here that I have some other ones like F kill and I'm messing with this. This is one of the examples in there. Oh, FCO is pretty cool too. It's somewhat useful And here. Actually, I'll show you something else as well. So let's go out here and I'll show you FCO. And I'm on my lab branch of Doom. And you can see here, this shows the commits between you and master. And so that's pretty nice. Gives you an idea of uh, what you're going to get if you switch that branch. So not bad. Not to be confused with, though, with, uh, let's see here. What is my... Oh, let's go here. What is it? Huh? Oh, what did I do there? I don't want that. All right, so let's, let's see. Where's my... Uh, check it. Okay, it's not there. All right, so it must be in my Vim or, or my init Vim. So let's try... Uh, Check out, yeah, okay. Here we go. Oh, GC, GC, okay. Now, this is half the battle here is figuring out what the heck. Okay, so there we go. Branches. Did I show you that earlier? No, okay, it was buffers. It's different. I need to get those configs together. And so now I'm in Vim. And I can see where each branch is. It shows me the commit. So that's very nice. So I'm on my own. And if I want to just switch to master right here, I just go ahead and go and it'll switch. Now I'm on master. Okay. And then if I want to go back to my branch of doom, back on branch of doom. So there's endless possibilities of things that you can do with FZF. It's, you can basically connect anything and uh, make it do all kinds of stuff, preview, whatever else. So if you're not using it, 
for Vim and NeoVim, you should check it out. I know that there's Telescope. I have no idea if I'm even making sense when I say that, if they're even supposed to be. Let's just see. Uh, NVIM Telescope. I mean, is this a replacement for... Yeah, find, filter, preview, pick, all Lua all the time. Yep, yep, all Lua all the time. All right, so... Oh, yeah, okay. So, Fuzzy Finder. And I know that uh, some plugin developers are building some stuff that are uh, that uh, is working with telescope i think there's that new octo we'll see if that's got anywhere i tried it and it was pretty awesome but not quite ready for prime time and it uses telescope oh i think they have a new screenshot here and yeah, see it requires a telescope so we'll see how it goes with telescope and i know we're all Lua all the time now but uh I am using FCF. There's a lot of related projects out there. In fact, look at that. It's conveniently located here. You can see there are a lot of things that you can hook up. Marks was built in, and so I'm not sure what that one is, but and checkout is not listed here, and it's really awesome. So I'm not sure. But anyway, there are other uh, plugins that people have made that have wrapped uh, FCF. And so you can use it in your terminal, you can use it in Vim, and it's really awesome. And I highly recommend it. You know, maybe the future is telescope or maybe there's good use cases for telescope and good for FCF. FCF has a proven track record of awesomeness. And when you use rip grip along with it, it's blazing fast, it'll actually cook cook your sushi so it'll be more than burnt it'll be you know totally cooked so it, it won't even be sushi anymore it'll just be fish so all right that's all i have for you check out fcf use it in your terminal use it in vim it's awesome you'll be fast your life will be better 2021 will be better just because of that all right take care watch for more thank you for watching have a nice day see you later